recording in progress. All right. Hey, everyone. So I'm here with Craig, who is from Remote Viewing Data. That is a YouTube channel that I've recently discovered. It's um, got some very impressive work on Bitcoin. I'd say it's definitely up there. I've, I've looked around on YouTube for different psychic predictions on Bitcoin, and they're usually kind of all over the place. But honestly, if you're looking for some really solid psychic predictions on Bitcoin, I would recommend checking out remote viewing data. I'll post a link below this video in the description for that. Uh, very impressive work on, on that regard. Um, another thing that is done on their channel um, is deep mind, um, what do you call it? Deep mind probing. Mind probes. Yeah. Mind probes, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and just really quick, uh, so I didn't even know about Craig or his channel until like a couple of weeks ago. He got a reading from me and one of the things that came up, I don't normally share personal information, but I feel like this is okay to share. Just that I was getting that he was aligned with psychic work. And I was like, wow, like you're really connected with your higher self, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, well, you should be, mm -hmm. you, you should be doing what I'm doing. And then like a couple of weeks later, I get a text saying, oh, hey, I actually have a channel where I do basically the same thing you do. And so we've done some collaboration and um, just for the audience, I did an interview on his channel. So you can check that out on his channel too. I also go off on a little bit of a, a tangent on my experience with aliens, which might be kind of interesting if you're into that thing, so. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyways, I just wanted to start off by asking like, uh, how long you've been doing remote viewing and kind of like what got you into remote viewing? <clears throat> yeah, it was the same as you. So if you remember in our conversation, you started in um, 2020. Around that time is when you started taking it more seriously. And uh, I feel like that was like a pivot point for people. Like I noticed people who are in the spiritual, like they became more spiritual in 2020. Do you find that too? Yeah, I feel like like the the lockdowns kind of made everybody kind of mm -hmm. be forced to be in that. I also kind of funny you mentioned that I did some readings on 2020, actually kind of how it started off with coronavirus. I kind of saw it as kind of like a reset and like kind of like um a cathartic way of the earth changing on some in some regards that's exactly what we got that's exactly oh, yeah. what we, it, it was a catalyst to uh make people more spiritual as opposed to the robotic lives that we left like going to work coming home going to work coming home it was supposed to kind of take us out of that bubble essentially but yeah we had the lockdowns and i thought you know i'm going to try some meditation but I, I i did a lot of meditation and i was trying to mix it up so I went online and I was looking up actually uh, astral projection for whatever reason. That's just what I had in my head. And I went on Reddit and it was going to take too long. It was like, you got to go to sleep and wake up at 3 a.m. Don't move your body. You have to think of a certain thing. And I was like, nah, I want to do something right now. And then I came across remote viewing and then I tried it. And then I started guessing things that there, there was no way I could have, you know, drew the tower or drew the person and, and just kind of know in advance what it was so uh i went down the rabbit hole and this is where i am today i was trying to make money with it you know right. pick lottery numbers and stocks so oh yeah <laughs> lottery numbers did you have any success with that no i i meant i i, I went uh for stocks and then crypto predictions and right i did that but the it the 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 fundamental is like, well, if you're psychic, why can't you just win the lottery? So, yeah. and it's a good question, right? Yeah. Because, you know, and, and there, there is a method to it. You know, you're supposed to associate the numbers with smells and huh. other things. So when you're, yeah, because for whatever reason, location and numbers don't come through so well. Yeah, I've experienced that. <laughs> that's yeah. interesting. I've never heard that method. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, like like four can be cinnamon, 
hmm. you know, spicy. And then you could do other things, not just smell, but you know, it's, you gotta be very, very good at it because you're front loading essentially. So you're going to know what you're doing, but um, so we ended up uh, trying to make money with stocks and cryptos. And it's interesting because it's one of those things where there's definitely something to it. We're not wrong. It's like we're hitting it, but it's, it's almost like you're not meant to make money in that way. Right. It's like a almost sentient. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's definitely really hard to read those types of things from, from my experience. I think we talked about that before in the other interview, but, but yeah, it's also just kind of like, for me, it's like, I kind of need like a sense of curiosity to really kind of drive it. And then when it's just like, there's like a goal or like, you know, like I'm doing this because of this, I'm not really doing it because I'm actually curious in it. And it's kind of like, I need to kind of lose your neutrality a little bit and kind of lose your sense of clarity, I guess you could say. That's my experience at least. Does, do you really I never got off. Yeah, I mean, we never, I never got off track. You know, I was really persistent. You know, I mean, we put a lot of time into it and to the point where we were working with a hedge fund. I don't know if I told you that. A couple of guys uh, who were like the top of the hedge fund or whatever. And um, it was, um, you know, I mean, it works. I mean, I guess you could break it down and say, well, it works 60% of that, where it works 70% of the time. So it's still worth pursuing. Right. But I don't know. It, it, it's like, it just always slipped through our fingers. But when we removed ourselves from the equation and would put out predictions, we'd get some major ones, like specific days, there'd be big drops. Now, I think it was that more accurate because I didn't short the stock at that point, or I didn't, wasn't directly involved. And then yeah. we're trying to always find, and then it, it, it's like, okay, well, we can put it out for other people. And I find that when we brag about how right we are all the time, then the wrong ones come. You know? Yep. <laughs> I can relate to that. Or when it's a big deal for you and you're invested in it mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, this is going to be, this is going to be it. And then it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. it evolved to the deep mind probes, which are essentially uh, where distant mental influence were able to probe consciousness. And it doesn't stop at a human. We can kind of do energy or even objects and um the it's just so on point i mean it, it it it's it's undeniable that there's extreme accuracy with it so we've um we started just kind of like well let's do celebrities and then we're like well let's do a cryptos but we'll do the crypto the founders and we'll see if it's a pump and dump if they're taking it seriously you know we kind of probe that way that was super accurate then we did stocks, if I said that already. But what's interesting with the stocks is like, there's a, there's a few on my channel that we did Lordstown Motors and Sorrento Therapeutics through whatever reason. It was a friend that referred me to the stock. So I just had my eye on it and I was objective because I didn't care. Well, at the time, the stocks were flourishing. They had all these assets. It never looked like it was going to tank. And when we did the reading on it, it was the opposite. We're like, yeah, it's $30 now, but when it gets down to $4, they're going to start liquidating all those assets. Well, we posted it up on Reddit. And as you know, I'm sure it's like people were very defensive or, you know, as they should be skeptical about remote viewing and all that. So the negative comments come, oh, the stock will never grow to zero. And over time, that everything we said was going to happen, happened. It was just like, like almost I was telling Liz, I'm like, nah, I don't think this is, I think we got to miss on this one. And in the end, we were right about everything, but there's no one, <laughs> there's no, like everyone lost their money. No one cares anymore. Everyone moves on. So that's, that's the nature of predicting stock market stuff. I feel. Um, yeah. I, I mean, even when I get it right and I like say it in a video and I post it, I don't, I didn't even follow my own advice. <laughs> Just like, oh man. <laughs> This is true. This so, is true. Yeah. So, um, so you work with, with Liz and, um, 
I'm just curious, how did you guys end up working together? How did you guys find each other? We met on a Telegram group of trading with remote viewing. And uh, I just took it seriously. And I saw she had a specific talent. So with the remote viewing, you remote viewing, they have protocols that you're supposed to follow, which we don't. And, um, you know, it's just more time consuming that way. But Liz has some skill set where she doesn't that there are some problems with it because if she's aware of what she's probing her conscious mind can you know your imagination can kick in especially if she cares about the subject and it's been a problem before but if she's removed and we kind of go into a blind and we're just freestyling it it works every time and we could do it very fast so i i saw that she had that skill set and we worked together and i was paying for you know, readings on the stocks and I was taking it seriously. And that's where, that's where it all began. Yeah. I noticed you have this um, technique. I've been watching some more of your videos and it, it, it's like you, she's like reading you in the future to, to like yeah. see where you're at. Um, that That's a pretty interesting method. Is there have you gone through like trial and error to discover that to be like the best method or like? It's one of the best methods. That is yeah. the, best the time method. movements seem to be very good, but the, the difference is like, we, we, we change the outcomes now. So now I feel like time is fluid because we've, we've been aware of certain things and we've done, we've operated differently. So you like, changed the, the outcome because of viewing it, how it would go and by viewing it, you, you change the present which changes the future mm -hmm. is that what you're yeah. saying like even when you gave a reading right i was actually asking you without asking you specifically i said i have this new business venture you know as as everyone knows i have the app the deep but mind now I, app. I didn't know at the time i didn't know what i was reading <laughs> no you didn't know yeah you didn't know and i was like well how's it gonna go what are the problems that are gonna come up and you mentioned a guy, you said, there's going to be something with a guy. He's, it's, you're going to have to work it out and it's going to be a little bit of an issue and eventually it'll get solved. So um, I have a few developers. Now there's one that he just, he has all the code. It, it just, the way all the chips fell together, he's kind of like, I'm dependent on him to respond and f finalize a few things. And then he just freaking disappeared on me. You know, just like you said, and we were aware of it ahead of time. Oh, that's good. About a month ago, a month ago, I had probed all of the developers that I was working with just because it was in conversation and we were aware that he was going to stop responding. And of course, we recorded all of this like a month ago. So it's essentially time stamped. Um, but we've done this so many times. I, I can't even keep track. It's, you know, but yeah, I mean. So I, I prepared and now we're, you know, um, still trucking along, but uh, it seems that you're able to do time movements and probe like you could you can even you can even probe a different reality. So you could say the version of myself where I'm extremely wealthy 10 years from now and I'm fit and all the things I want to be, you can connect to that version of yourself, that tie. And you, you put his head on, on your head and you ask questions and you say, what do I have to do? What do I have to change? And you can assume that person, right? So it, it, it would seem that there's different realities you can connect to and get answers from. So even when we're doing time movements, we have to be specific that it's related to the reality that we're our probable reality, I should say. That's very so, interesting. Mm -hmm. that's, that's very similar to a technique that I've been learning recently of um, kind of viewing your astral body and like healing your astral body and then being, bringing the astral body into your physical body and kind of allowing it to match or having your kind of like bringing it into like your physical manifestation more yeah. similar yeah. concept, but so yeah. Different. Yeah. There's, there's another cool thing about the time movements, too, that we haven't really displayed on video. Originally, I would um, 
you can send signals back to your past self. So if you're receptive to it at a certain date and time, you could go into a meditative state. And when you get good at it, you can send emotional signals and you kind of feel like uh, you feel it in your stomach mostly. So you're in that state, you can, you know, two pulses for yes. I usually just do no pulses. So the way you would get used to doing that is you just be in the habit of making sure at the moment of decision to send these signals. And now that you're in the habit of doing that, you listen for essentially your future self who's going to send the signal in the future. So an example would be like, Interesting. I, I made a bad call when I sold my Bitcoin, I should have held on to it. So at that moment where you're about to make the decision, it helps when you're in a meditative state, but over time you kind of get used to it. So you don't have to be, and you just, you're aware that you're waiting and then you can kind of feel it. In the future, you just have to remember to always send the signals. I used to write emails to myself uh, that were scheduled. So at the day where it mattered, you know, like a year from now, I'll say, how did Bitcoin do? I have an email. Oh, should I have bought it at 20,000? You know, obviously, yes. But at the time, you didn't know. It was around 20,000 in December of 2020 or something like that. And... I would send signals and what should I buy? Should I just buy more real estate or should I buy the Bitcoin? And uh, yeah, and that's what I was doing for a little while and I got pretty good at it. So it's not on the channel, but. Yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty practical, pretty useful. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And unbelievable too. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So you should, you know, when you do it for yourself, you start adopting the beliefs like, oh, God, this is a real thing you know i feel it i can do it on my own but when you hear someone else talking about it you kind of like you know maybe maybe not yeah well that's interesting maybe i'll have to experiment <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah um it's a good one yeah um yeah so when we had the conversation before on your channel um you were bringing up how aliens popped up and that's how I got on that whole subject but I was just curious um like what you meant by that like you just have lots of alien activity like you're just like there's just weird stuff going on and just seems to show up in the readings well uh the person I work with Liz it like hates alien stuff (laughs) because she when she probes them she's aware that they're they're more advanced in that regard. And she feels vulnerable, I think, you know, and, and people who are, let's say, are not even sure if aliens are real, they're going to go into it. Just, let's just try it. Who cares? You know, like I had friends a long time ago and I wanted to try an Ouija board and I, I did it because I wasn't sure if it was even real. I'm like, let's just do it. But they were scared, but they were also not believers, (laughs) but I'm like, well, which one is it? You know? Right. So, when you have the bad experience, then you're scared. So she had some bad experiences. So I uh, would meditate. And for whatever reason, I just connect with aliens and I see, you know, I I assume I have it. Right. But I'm not really sure. So uh, just as an example, you know, you and I had that conversation, right. With your experience. So I also had an experience kind of recently and I recorded the entire thing. So I made a, I made a, we made a video on it today because, you know, I wasn't sure. Oh, you just posted it today? Yeah. Yeah. I, oh, cool. I'll it, check it out. <laughs> well, it'll, it'll go up in maybe an hour, you know, okay. it's, cool. you know, it's processing. So, um, um, the, the, for whatever reason, there's that, but, and I'll go into detail, but the one that comes to mind was I was meditating and I went out into, um, outside of earth you know like an and astral I, was, I don't know i don't okay. know i was a just my, my, let's just say my con yeah let's just say my remote viewing. awareness yeah. was out there my yeah my remote viewing was out there and um and i was you know trying to signal you know a ufo and i saw like an entity with like like kind of like long hair but it looked like um 
a character from SpongeBob. I think Squid, the Squid one, Squidward, Squidward. He looked okay. like that <laughs> with like the long, but it, it was like uh, you would describe it almost like dreadlocks, right? Okay. So kind of yeah. like big tentacle thing. So it wasn't hair. It would almost, and it was um, humanoid in nature in that way. You know, I had like arms and legs, I assume. But it was it was described at that mo- moment as Squidward. I saw it very clearly. Interesting. Okay. So I just put down and down on my thoughts, not a big deal. Later on, I was listening to some remote viewers and they keep seeing Squidward. Hmm. How would you describe an alien? He's like, I don't know. It looks like Squidward. So that happened like two times on two separate um, instances. So it was very validating for me. I saw it. No one told me about it. I personally saw other people who have no idea what I saw experience the same thing. And it was just like my first encounter. And then after that, it was um, just, you know, reading these channeling sessions and connecting to what I assume are beings. And then eventually I believe one came down and I recorded it. So put it up on YouTube. Very interesting. (laughs) Yeah. I'll I'll have to watch that video. Uh, Do you ever tune into like energy beings or is it usually like i think it was i think it was an energy being okay when we when we just probed it i think it was an energy being yeah he was um like pulsing some light at me let me see if i can pull it up but it's uh you know i like i like the alien stuff i know a lot of people i'm into it it's entertaining (laughs) and it's real i think so you know well, it's, it's one of the two big questions, right? Like, are we alone in the universe? And um, what happens after you die? So it's the mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, have, have you had other, like, um, interesting things that show up in your readings or, like, big, like, things that kind of, like, change your perspective or anything like that? Oh, you yeah. oh, sure. The whole, the whole thing changes your perspective of things because what happens is you go your whole life thinking what everyone else thinks. And over time, you start to learn that everyone's wrong because you, you, it's like a decision you make one day, like, all right, I'm going to think for myself from now on, you know? And it's like my approach to every problem, my approach to everything... I mean, think back at human history, when have humans ever maintained the same thought process for any subject? You know, even what comes to mind is, uh, is like, like 10 years ago, marijuana was like, you're a criminal, you know, caused brain damage, (laughs) et cetera, whatever it was. Now it's accepted. Yeah. Like like here, you know, um, and, uh, how about medical, you know, lobotomies? I mean, if you, if you, if you went to the 90s and and they gave you some medication if you were time if you traveled through time and you're you found yourself in the 90s and it wasn't like antibiotics or something they want to give you antidepressants and they were giving you i don't know what was it at the time zoloft or prozac or something no you wouldn't take that but that at the time was something you should be taking for whatever your condition is and it was accepted the guy in the white coat was giving it to you I don't know if I'm losing you on this example, but the point oh, I, is, I get what you're saying. The yeah. mainstream thinking is fundamentally wrong. And when I had realized that through my own curiosity, essentially, and my own effort and went off the beaten path, because it's harder to do that. It's harder to think for yourself with every little thing. Um, every time we experience something fringe or unnatural, it's validating and it further strays me away from my own old reality essentially yeah yeah i have a bit of a belief that on some level a lot of information is being um, suppressed intentionally kind of like to keep our consciousness down to a certain level this is not necessarily people but this is also like energy beings that are kind of working through people and it's kind of like a Mm. just a network that's where I see well, it at least. The reason why I believe that we, we don't talk about it because I don't want people to even know that we do it or, ha- or can do it. But 
the same way that we can probe consciousness and get information it's like we can also influence people to do things right and we've done it like where we recorded okay we're gonna meet make elon talk about dogecoin when is he gonna do it okay he's gonna do it tomorrow and then i'll record tomorrow okay he just did it and then we have a little dogecoin bot that buys and sells on the pumps the doge bot wow that's pretty impressive (laughs) well the impressive part is is not just the doge bot that's just how we make money and you know i kind of shut it down because i thought maybe it was not ethical but at the time it was can we do this thing and and the important part is like the recording of it because he doesn't he tweets about doge coin often but not like we could say tomorrow he's gonna do it you know it's not that often yeah uh, what once a month so um yeah it's all time stamped i mean it's recorded it's out there that's pretty anyways you, you, can you see this video yes and um that's i mean i don't know i can't validate that that is absolutely a real video but from what it looks like that looks real to me i would say that's that's what i've seen so, no i took it this is me with my kids Here oh that's you video <laughs> okay sorry then it is real <laughs> but yeah that's, that's definitely a uh that's definitely a ufo or that's a plane right there that's yeah. my house that's yeah. the that's the the and it would phase in and phase out yeah that's that's what i saw and sometimes i would just dart across the sky or whatever Mm -hmm. do all sorts of crazy things and it took me a while to even start recording this because i wasn't sure if i was looking at i don't know what i was looking at i was just staring at it yeah yeah i've seen like two of them side by side and then they like go and they become one and then Mm -hmm. (laughs) and she's like yeah yeah you know because i'm always talking about this stuff and um so but you know and then I didn't want to be like another one of those. I had the experience. I saw the UFO because there's a there's a there's a bit of narcissism in it too, right? He's yeah. here for me. Even in the video, that's what Liz because Liz probed it, and it's oh, yeah. me. And then my ego kind of lit up like me, and I'm like, that's see, I lost my biasness. Like I can't be objective now. So, um, you know. It's important when you're doing these things to to be honest and truthful and find these because what what I love are the negative comments because it's like a checks and balances. We can never get too stupid and say things that aren't true. We always have to be right because of the haters. So I I, I rely on them a little bit. So my thing is I like to say, I told you so. <laughs> right that's the goal right to you know that's the truth you have to be so right that you have to be able to get in their face and say i told you so right so because the skeptics have the higher ground where the crazy people but look at that yeah that, that's real i well i thought well it could be a satellite that's spinning and it's I mean, light it on one be. side but it was very, very big. And then I, I actually posted it in, a, in the today on the UFO. This happened in February. But I posted on the UFO Reddit thinking, let me just throw it out there for entertainment. Well, those guys take it real seriously. They're asking about the time and date. They check the ISS to see if yeah. it was spinning around in a location. And they said, according to the ISS, it wasn't around that time. What direction was it faced? And... Um, Apparently that's what they said. I didn't confirm it, but they said it wasn't wasn't that. Yeah, I mean, um, they it said could, it could be Venus. It could be. It could be anything potentially. But what I will say, from what I've seen, it looks exactly like what I've seen. That was like definitely not anything explainable. <laughs> because I told it to pulse three times with my mind, and I said it out loud. Oh. I know it sounds crazy. I didn't say it because I know how crazy it sounds, but I'm like, well, let me just try the Stephen Greer crazy part, right? Yeah, no, they do that, right? And, right. And, and, and I rewatched the video. It looked like it did pulse in its own way. Like it yeah. didn't flash, like, boom, 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 make it so obvious. But if you're looking 
and you know yeah for me it, for me it wasn't necessarily like i would be like do this and it would do it, it would be more like i'd be like ah okay they're not gonna do anything and then as soon as i think that they do something crazy and i'm like oh like it's just it's almost like they're messing with me or something yeah it's <laughs> gonna pulse right here watch this boom boom yeah see that and yeah. if you watched the video, I said, all right, guys, let's ask it to pulse, you know, but I, in my mind, I was doing it already ahead yeah. of time, you know, so, um, you know, maybe it's nothing, you know, they, they said it could have been Venus behind the clouds, but you, it, it was already, it was five in the morning, so you could see the daylights coming up. I could see the clouds and it looked in front yeah. of the clouds or it looked brighter yeah. than the clouds. Yeah. The clouds were not like big rain clouds at the time and. I already yeah. thought of that. <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I think we're um, getting pretty far in this interview. It actually says I have like seven minutes left before it's going to close down, unless I upgrade right. to pro. But um, yeah, I just wanted to mention really quick, you, you, you asked me in the other um, interview on, on your channel about the uh, layers of the aura being like the chakras, and I was... was watching it back and I realized I didn't really answer the question. And so I just wanted to clarify really quick that like the layers of the aura, uh, the way that I've been trained to interpret it and whatnot is they they correlate to the chakras, but it's, but it, the difference is that the chakras are more like your potential that you haven't necessarily manifested yet. Whereas the layers of the aura are more so what has been manif manifested in the past or is in the works of being manifested in the uh, future and sometimes when you look at someone's aura you can kind of see the energy of what's about to happen to them and that's because it's, the manifestation is kind of in the works and so that's that's the difference between the chakras and the layers of the aura so the 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 aura is not bound by time in its own way like it's it can represent things that happen in the past and the future i mean i guess you could say that I, I i would say that the chakras are kind of similar too because it's like the potential it's just that it's not necessarily going to be you know maybe in a different timeline it could be manifested or something like that but, um yeah, I i'm mean, always trying to understand that. the. i'm always trying to figure out the mechanics of it but yeah i mean i don't i don't know <laughs> i think I, i'd say that those... i'd say yeah it's a little more fluid than the present moment for sure yeah i will uh i will definitely take those courses at one point it's like something i like to do as a hobby you know the ones that you referred me to oh nice i think that's going to give me clarity yeah awesome um so just a quick plug yeah this is the app you have to go to deepmindprobes.com to download it because you have to create the account but this was a world of difference because we were putting up stuff that was controversial and it got a it was censored by youtube so it was all the contra all the cool the juicy stuff is on the app and then we put up a bunch of free stuff on youtube for promotion but it has a little community we have discord um and the app is just super cool. <laughs> just super unique information. If anyone's interested, come join us. Come hang out. Awesome. All right. Well, thank yeah. you, Craig. Um, check out Remote Viewing Data. I'll post the link below this video for everyone to check out. And it's been, been good talking to you, Craig. I'll uh, talk to you sometime in the future. All right. Peace All out. right. Thanks, Take bro. Take it easy.